Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, I will be talking about Hour of Devastation so far in the story. So, don't get all triggered if you're like, oh, you didn't warn us, because I, I just did, alright? What's up, you guys? It's your pal Void Mage Gamer here, coming back at you with another video. This time, we're going to be talking about the current story, and our pals, the gods, and the Gatewatch, and... What the hell's going on here with little Nikki? So apparently, if you didn't already know, uh, Nicol Bolas went to Amon Ket. This is basically what, what how they started off the story with our devastation. Is they kind of went back in time and showed you what happened after Nicol Bolas. I don't know if it was after the mending or if it was after the events that, uh, from the from Alara. I'm I'm guessing it's after Alara, but anyway, this. They start off the story with sort of how it all began, which is usually, a, it's a pretty decent way on how to start most stories when you go back to uh, sort of do like a little mini prequel. So basically what happened was Nicol Bolas just went through the Hecma, which is the, the barrier that uh, kind of it, it protects Amon Ket from all the outside threats on the plane that the gods can't deal with. Uh, it kind of helps them out there, I guess you could say that. There's a lot of shit. There's a lot of zombies, a lot of sandworms, a lot of hectic bullshit on that plane. So, they do need some protection for their people, and they have a pretty beautiful looking city. So, what happened was, he just went through that Hecma with, like, little to no effort. It usually keeps out most threats. He, he It didn't even phase him, really. Because he's Nicol Bolas, he doesn't give a shit about anything. So he went through there, and immediately the gods, they approached him, and they're like, you know, oh, we need to defend our city from from uh, this huge dragon dude that just came in here without any effort. So they thought that, you know, because naturally they, they've lived their whole lives thinking that they're the most powerful things in on Amon Cat there, with the exception, I guess you could say, the god pharaoh that they worship or claim to worship. Uh, but then again... It's so confusing because it's like, was there a god pharaoh before Nicol Bolas went there? Or I guess he's the god pharaoh that he corrupted their minds. So eventually what happened was they tried to screw with him and they thought that they could, you know, with any hope at all, they thought that they could stop him. They were wrong. Uh, and it's just hilarious because it reminds me of what happened to Teferi uh, with Kefnet in particular. Because every single, like, every single blue character in the multiverse that has ever tried to fuck with Nikki, they just get embarrassed. Like, it is not even, it's not even funny, like, how, how badly they get embarrassed. Kefnet tries to use some of his, you know, tele telepathy, I guess you could call it telepathy. I didn't, I just skimmed through it, so I'm paraphrasing, I don't know exactly word for word what it is. But, you know, he does have his own blue magic. So he tried to use it on Nicol Bolas. So naturally, it doesn't phase him at all. Nikki basically just shatters his mind. Because that's pretty much his, like, number one move is to just go up to people and shatter their minds. Uh, how it reminds me of Teferi was, if you don't already know, Teferi's dead. Spoiler alert. Uh, shouldn't be a spoiler alert. It's been known for, you know, a while now. He's been dead. And... Nicol Bolas just, you know, Teferi thought he was, you know, going to screw with him. Like, oh, look. And I think his friends on Dominaria were like, oh, well, yeah. He doesn't stand a chance against Teferi. Look, he's he's just a great uh, blue wizard. Look at him. He's so awesome. So what happens? Nicol Bolas just shatters his fucking mind. Planes walks away from any attack that he can do. And just absolutely embarrasses them. And just holds Teferi's head in his claws. And is just like, look. Yeah. He's giving me all his information. This is even after he lost, like, fucking 25,000 years of knowledge. Well, not all of it, but, you know, a good portion of it because of the mending. So, even post-mending, he's still able to embarrass anyone without even trying. So, again, he used to be a god, for those of you that don't know about Nicol Bolas. He was, at one point, even more powerful than you could comprehend in the multiverse. Like, he was a god of the multiverse. Not a Theros god. Not an Amon Ket god. An actual freaking god. Like, there would be no question of his power versus all of the Eldrazi and the Phyrexians combined. He could erase them. No doubt about it. 
Now, I mean, I would still say head-to-head, Nickel Bolas versus any of any one of the Ildrazi Titans, I think against all three might be a stretch, but I could definitely see him pulling it off. However, 1v1, I think him against any of the Eldrazi Titans and the, the three main ones, I mean, he could easily take down Emrakul, I think, without it, without too much trouble. He might need preparation, but I think, again, he's able to planeswalk away from most attacks. So, what trouble is it? I mean, if you saw how easily they were defeated by the Gatewatch, like, Nicol Bolas wouldn't have to try that hard. I mean, come on. It is almost anti... It's pretty... It is anticlimactic. How Emrakul was defeated. Oh, Jace and Tamiyo. Just they float up to the moon and they link Emrakul to the moon. And then it folded her up and captured her in there. Okay. Well, yeah, she's not dead, but still defeated for the time being. I mean, I chalked that up as a win for Tamiyo and Jace, and I'm sure they're quite proud of that. Look, we defeated Emrakul. Who wouldn't brag about that? So you're telling me Nicol Bolas wouldn't be able to do the same shit? Yeah, huh? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so basically the gods, they tried to fuck with Nicol Bolas and they got their shit wrecked. They got their memories erased and they were corrupted. I wouldn't say corrupted, but they were, I guess, reprogrammed like a lot of characters in the multiverse have been because of Bolas, you know, i.e. Tezzeret, you know. So we have, and then he took the other three gods because there's a total of eight there was a total of eight. He kept three of them for himself. And if you don't know the three, it's the Scarab God, the Locust God, and the Scorpion God. And he kept those three for himself for some reason, I'm guessing, for flavor purposes. Because even though this is a fictional version of, you know, ancient Egypt, they're still trying to reference the Bible for some reason, even though they left out all the parts about slavery. Yeah, we wouldn't want to mention anything like that. I was actually expecting there to be a keyword called enslaved. I mean, God, I, mean, I would actually be, like, scared if they actually made a slavery mechanic. If they also involved, like, reference to, like, Jewish people. That would be pretty fucked up. <laughs> that would be really messed up. But again, they tried to reference the Bible because uh, it's ancient Egypt. It was a pretty big deal. There's a lot of references with like uh, Ramses and you know all of them. So the one thing that confuses me is that these three gods they sort of in a way represent some of the plagues, especially the locust god. Uh, I don't remember anything about scarabs or scorpions, but I'm definitely sure they were part of it. Maybe, uh, and I do know that the the blood, the blood and the water that was definitely one of them. Or at least I think it was. No, no, no. What what it was was I think Moses, he threw his staff into the water and it turned the water to blood. I don't think that was actually one of the plays. I think that was just actually something that Moses did to scare the shit out of someone. Uh, so, and then what happened was basically, then we, we go back to present time in the multiverse. So, all of the gods are just, they're waiting I forget like what exactly it's called, but they're waiting for the god Pharaoh to come because the second sun went between the the horns, and so that's supposed to signify that's when the god Pharaoh returns. And instead of him actually returning immediately, well, I'm sure he does return eventually, but the three gods, or the three gods that he stowed away for later, he basically... He had them just come out, and they were based, and all the gods and all the people of Anmanket, they thought, oh wow, well, it's a, it's an idol, it's a final like trial for the gods this time. So, all of the gods, they approached the they uh well not all of them. I think Ronus initially was just like all cocky and shit, and he went up to the Scorpion God because the Scorpion God was the first one to kind of step forward, and this motherfucker's like he's pretty intimidating. If you've read the the story so far, he's like single-handedly screwing over all the gods and it's almost certain that he's he's the one that kills them all. So yeah, they all die. <laughs> Might as well just come to that conclusion, they're all dead because not only is the scarab god much bigger than all of the gods, but 
even if they do kill him, he just reanimates because of Bolas's necromantic energy and magic there. Like, he is actually getting powerful uh, day by day because of just channeling all this energy. I guess, I don't know how exactly it works. Because they pray to him, because they worship him as a god pharaoh, does that make him stronger? Kind of like how the gods on Theros worked? I'm only guessing that's how it works. That's how he planned on getting more powerful. I Honestly, I'm not an expert on the MTG lore. I'm just using what I already know. So I'm guessing that, you know, by praying to him, he would become much stronger? I don't know. It confuses the hell out of me, though. But anyway, I think... Yeah, once uh, so far, it's not confirmed, because we only have four of the episodes already. Uh, there's still four more, because God forbid they actually release this shit after we already know all the cards. I mean, all the cards are already, you know spoiled for the set so we already know the actual story marks and they don't even like have those out yet on the website so thanks a lot wizards for taking your sweet ass time you haven't even you're only halfway through the fucking story now we already have all the cards spoiled so what's the point in waiting just tell us the damn story they're trying to make it like a weekly thing and you know who cares i don't think that many people read enough to make it worth it just release this shit on time so anyway, I think, yeah, we haven't actually seen a lot of involvement in this storyline yet for our devastation. We haven't seen a lot of involvement yet from the Gatewatch. All we really know is that already have uh, from the battle with Razakath, the demon that Uliana wanted to kill, and they, they did that fairly easily once all the Gatewatch got together. So that's pretty much their involvement up to this point. And, of course, we have... Gideon just sort of, I guess, acting all regretful because of, I don't know, I guess Oketra kind of made him feel bad because he was one of the trespassers. Because if you didn't already know, all of the inhabitants of Amonkhet, they're basically upset with the Gatewatch and those the good guys, basically. They call them trespassers and they kind of associate them with Nicol Bolas because of you know, all, all the evil that's going on. He's a planeswalker. They're planeswalkers. So they kind of lumped him in there. Uh, they lumped Gideon and and the rest of the Gatewatch with Nicol Bolas. So they kind of don't like him to the point where they're like, you know what, let's just let them deal with this asshole. We're just going to run away. Good luck. Good luck trying to find a place to hide. The heck must shattered, so you have to get past that and, you know, find refuge out in the deserts, I guess. That's your only real hope. I just think it's uh, it's very confusing too. Some of the actual characters, like if you look at Neb, uh, he was Rakdos in his non-zombie form, but in his zombie form, he's mono red. I've never heard of that before, where becoming a zombie actually takes away your black energy and your mana. Like what? What? the hell like I don't understand that someone needs to explain that to me that, that makes no sense why would it take away your black mana that's just confusing but I think when we get this this uh these next four episodes hopefully someone in the gatewatch ends up dying I know it's not gonna happen but that would interest me highly because we would we would average a lot less in terms of the same planeswalkers, we wouldn't have to deal with, you know, 2,000 Gideons a year or 2,000 Lilianas or 2,000 Nissas. I'm just tired of seeing them all. They just need to go and, you know, fuck off and never come back. At least for a long time. Uh, so if you've looked at the spoilers for Ixalan, if you know anything about that set, you'll know that we should have that wish granted here pretty soon. We don't have to deal with the Gatewatch for a while now. And that's even going on to Dominari, I think. I don't know what their plans for characters on Dominari are. But it's looking pretty good. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more awesome videos. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. This is Void Mage Gamer here signing off. Thanks for watching.